Hello folks, let's take a look at a modern Nikon DSLR. I uh, recently made a video about the dangers of using uh, D-series autofocus lenses that have uh, switches on the lenses for manual and autofocus. Let's uh, take a look at what we're talking about. Here is also what does not exist on D3000 and D5000 series. Over here we have our switch for switching between um, manual focus and autofocus. Here we go. And I don't know if you can see it right there, but we have our engagement motor, which is spring loaded right there. And this is also adjustable. If the screw actually ever comes loose, this has been the cause of uh, some people thinking that their camera was broken when actually it was only this one tiny set screw, which uh, sets. Uh, the strike depth on uh, the back of the uh, autofocus uh, lens, like the screw drive D series, the pre AFS lenses, the ones that do not have uh, internal autofocus drive motors. This is a modern Nikon DSLR. Up here, you can see we have our circuit board, uh, actually, one of several, and underneath these are uh, flexible feed cables. Uh, for feeding uh, TTL information and other data from uh, the flash is uh, the pentaprism. You can see the black pentaprism buried underneath right there. And uh, also, by the way, it doesn't matter if it's a cheap Nikon uh, camera or it's an expensive Nikon camera, if you ever wondered uh, I mean, really, you think you can get a really cheap Nikon, you know, like a D7 thousand for like three hundred fifty dollars if you actually knew how many parts are even inside a cheap and this isn't a cheap one this is actually a d90 um, I mean it's cheap now but I mean it used to be a pretty damn expensive camera uh, how many parts are inside a modern DSL there's an old southern saying and it goes to uh, ten pounds of shit in a five pound bag and uh, I mean every Nikon is exactly like that these are the feed cables for the LCD and the buttons for the rear display. Also, by the way, if you ever get a broken camera, these are valuable. These are universal. Doesn't matter uh, which uh, which uh, Nikon camera it is. You should always remove these and sell these. You want to talk about scrapping the good stuff out of a broken camera? Here is what you need to remove and keep these and keep these in good looking shape because these are actually. A command uh, a good little value on eBay. Um, this is uh, actually the buffer and uh, the uh, substrate uh, motherboard, if you will. It's not technically a motherboard. Um, here's the uh, SD card slot on the uh, D90. Uh, let's take a look at the back. But yeah, if you ever wondered as far as the incredible number of uh, of screws and the complexity of uh, any modern uh, DSLR. Here's a little microphone, here's infrared sensor. There's actually a person that's actually taken a bunch of these out and got them to work and made a neat little device. People that do a lot of microphone hacks. But uh, these are your uh, command dials right here. Let's uh, take a look. I've uh, got to the point where I could remove uh, the digital sensor off this camera and actually even on a modern D800 or D700 or D7100 you still have this really rigid chassis that the back of the sensor sits on obviously so because you want the focal plane perfectly flat and you want the the sensor to rest on there nicely so let's remove that I removed the three screws that actually hold it in and uh, I'm actually going to remove the cables off of there that feed that because here we go and there is a little ultrasonic vibrator that will actually remove the dust from the sensor but like I've told you before in a prior video the actual uh, digital sensor is underneath uh, these uh, infrared and uh, there's a three layer of filter underneath here and I have to remove that with a bracket these are uh, electrostatic discharge copper plates to remove uh, dielectric uh, uh, charge from uh, actually causing a uh, overload of the sensor it is also a, a reason why because you got it sitting on a tripod and a lot of tripods or monopods or metal this is your tripod socket on the bottom inside the camera and that's hooked to an ESD electrostatic discharge plate a copper plate here they're not using copper for no reason so this is your tripod socket right here but it has the electrostatic discharge so you're not actually when it's on the camera it's easy especially if I get a lightning strike 
with uh, you know your camera on your tripod I mean uh, the electrostatic charge could travel up through the tripod and into the tripod socket and very easily short out your uh, Nikon DSLR so that's what this uh, copper plate is for so we're revealing the parts and uh, secrets and as I probably showed you in the prior video you know the uh, current Nikon shutters shutter curtains are uh, exactly the same like this they're not Teflon, uh, I mean, excuse me, they're not uh, uh, Teflon coated titanium. And you can just actually see how flexible they are, and they actually make a really good flame. And uh, here's a modern shutter curtain. I'll bend one for you. Uh, stick it over a nice flame, it makes a nice toxic flame, and it burns really fast and good. And uh, this one actually suffered from. Uh, shutter overlap and the shutter was ruined and uh, one of the other components but there are a few parts that I can actually extract out of this like here this is sellable the sensor itself is sellable um, this is uh, definitely sellable the pentaprism also I'm removing it for this which I kind of easily remove that and the pentaprism but the sensors are actually quite fascinating and uh, the diffraction and the uh, the, fil the filters on the front of the sensor. Very neat little sucker. And uh, so I thought I'd show you, like, the next time you question, it's like, well, you know, things have gotten a lot, you know, technology is advanced. And of course, modern DSLRs, I mean, they, you know, they, Canon and Nikon and everybody else is always fighting to add another pussy feature, another a douchebag feature to their camera and that requires always more feeds, more cables, more buttons, more this, more that and really any modern Nikon, it, believe it or not, you should see the inside of a Nikon D700. If you think this one is quote unquote 10 pounds of crap in a 5 pound bag you should, really, you should see the inside of a Nikon D700. I mean it makes this look uh, really simple by comparison. Um, but anyway those are the shutters. And the, um, I'd actually heard a report about a Canon that uh, was rated for 200,000 shutter clicks, and uh, it the shutter failed on it at just a hair over 600,000. There are also more than a few uh, Nikon D700s that I've heard of that have well over 300,000 shutter clicks. Obviously, you do not want to buy a D700. Generally speaking, with more than 60, 70,000 shutter clicks, but I mean mine had 105,000 on it, and I'm not worried about it. It's uh, 300 some dollars to replace it from KEH. But if you, if you never should question the cost of replacing the shutter mechanism. You're talking about a $40 part, but there, <laughs> there's $250 worth of labor. I mean, these are all the screws. And it actually takes a, a bit more than this and some over here. It takes uh, just a ton of labor to actually get the shutter mechanism outside of a, out, out of a modern Nikon DSLR. Anyway, I thought I'd show you that. I bet you especially love the fact that the, the, the shutter curtain blades burn so easily. I bet you thought they were metal. This is actually lighter weight than paper. I forget the actual sort of... Uh, it's not Teflon, but it's another sort of coating element for ultra-low friction. So these last long that uh, these plastic uh, shutter curtain blades are coated in. It's like Teflon, but I actually forget the name of it. But uh, it's ultra low friction stuff. It's just very silky feeling. Uh, it's uh, much lighter than paper. A pa piece of paper that is of the same thickness and size. So I thought I'd show you all that. And uh, here we go. And I'm going to take a couple of these and, and sell them. Because they're actually slightly valuable. Not very valuable, but anyway. Thanks for watching. I thought I'd show you the... Secrets inside of a modern Nikon DSLR, and uh, you should never again question, you know, the cost of them because the actual manual labor involved in putting these together. Yeah, there's a lot of automation in the individual parts, but the actual assembly itself, there is actually a titanic amount of uh, manual labor involved in assembling one of these. I mean, it makes, uh, and I used to repair notebooks. It makes repairing a modern uh, MacBook or MacBook Air just look, you know, just super, super simple. Look like Legos by comparison. So, anyway, thanks for watching. And I'm going to mine for gold here in a minute and remove the magical pentaprism out of this uh, Nikon because I love them. 
Catch you later, okay? Bye.